DLC, a way to extend the life of a game without having to produce a whole new game. Over the years, the connotation of DLC has changed. It doesn't always have a positive meaning. This is because some companies have turned it into a way to siphon as much money as they can from their customers, usually by either locking out parts of the main story or core mechanics behind paywalls. But it isn't all bad. In fact, there are some very memorable DLCs, even ones that were considered better than the base game. But fighting game DLC is kind of different. It's solely focused around characters. Sometimes their stages are costumes you can buy, but the main focus is always the characters. But not every character is created equal, especially when there's money involved. So today, we're going to talk about the most hated fighting game DLC characters, and why people hate them so much. But before we do, today's video is sponsored by Opera. Opera GX is a version of Opera that is specifically designed for gaming. It uses GX Control, which optimizes the browser while you're playing games. That way you can have multiple tabs open without worrying about it affecting your performance. You can also limit the CPU, RAM, and network bandwidth usage specifically to your liking. A really cool feature is how easily you can access your social media. Things like Discord and Twitch, which I use all the time, it's all integrated into the browser. Opera GX is also available for mobile and can be connected to the desktop version. So if you're tired of having to close every tab just to play games, click the link in the description to download Opera. It's completely free and you can start right away. Now I know I had Steve in the thumbnail of the last video, but I can't make a video about hated characters without mentioning him. The list would just be incomplete. Minecraft Steve is arguably the most hated DLC character in Smash. I know he is for sure in the competitive scene. Steve has the longest moveset in the game. In order to learn the matchup, you have to know so many different things. He has three weapons that he can upgrade by crafting and mining resources. He can place TNT and even decide where and when to explode it with redstone. His elytra recovery has an insane amount of control. He can grab you with a fishing rod. He can spike you from far away with an anvil. He can burn you with fire, lava, or a magma block. His forward and up throw pushes you with a piston. His inventory automatically discards the least valuable resources when full. And I even haven't gotten to the other moves like the minecart, but you get the point. And on top of all of that, he can create his own platforms in a platform fighting game. Like if he doesn't like the stage, he can just make a new one. You can also troll super hard with the blocks as well. Looking at SmashCon this year, there were 9 Steves in top 64. And among those Steves, one of them won. Onan, a 16 year old competitor made an amazing bracket run only dropping a total of 3 games in top 32, and along the way he 3-0'd MKLeo. So it's no surprise that people started complaining on Twitter about this character. It even got so bad that people hated Onan over it. Which I think is completely ridiculous by the way. This event reignited the debate about Steve to the point that the hashtag BanSteve was trending on Twitter. Now whether he actually gets banned or not, only time will tell. The funny thing about Guilty Gear Strive is that if any of those characters were put into other fighting games, they would probably be broken. It really only takes one wrong guess to lose 90% of your health. But with that being said, there's one character that does it better than the rest. Happy Chaos is a problem. He doesn't have a specific playstyle, which means he doesn't have a particular weakness like other archetypes in the game. He can zone you out from full screen with his gun, or rush you down with his really good normals and also his gun, and he can also mix you up, again, with his gun. <laughs> now you might be thinking that his weakness is the fact that he has to manage his ammo and his focus meter. Now that would be the case if he actually had to manage it. Look at how fast he gains meter. It's more like cycling through moves than actually managing the meter itself. But what I think makes Happy Chaos the most annoying is the fact that he can whiff buttons and still shoot the gun right after. Whiff punishing is a very integral part of fighting games. If someone whiffs a move right in front of you, you should be able to punish it. But with Happy Chaos, he can throw out a move and immediately shoot his gun to make it safe. Now say he's using Steady Shot instead of his regular one. If you block it, it guard breaks. And if you try and jump and block to get closer, the shot pushes you all the way back, negating all of your progress. Now I'm not saying Happy Chaos is impossible to win against, you can win, but the odds are really stacked against you. Luke is a classic example of a character that was forced into a game. Capcom is obviously trying to go in a different direction as we've seen with all the information we got from Street Fighter 6. The style is more modern and there's graffiti designs, the legacy characters look older, and you got some new characters like Luke. You know how most people will mention Ryu and Ken as the frontrunners when looking at the Street Fighter series? It feels like they're trying to do that with Luke. He's basically the poster boy of Street Fighter 6. He was in the very first trailer with Ryu and he's the one that guides you through the story. Now I don't have a problem with that, it's cool that they're switching things up. The problem is that Capcom got ahead of themselves and put Luke in Street Fighter 5, pretty much as an ad for the next game. I get the idea of introducing him to sort of transition to the next era, but you can probably guess what happened based on everyone else in this list. Luke was really strong. 
They definitely gave him main character energy by how strong his moveset was. They also made him look obnoxious, but that's besides the point. He was just a better version of other characters. There are a lot of Shotos in Street Fighter. You got Ryu, Ken, Sagat, Sakura, Dan, you get the point. But Luke is a better version of all of them. He has the fastest fireball in the game, which is really hard to react to compared to other fireballs, and you can combo it into v trigger off of it as well. His DP had 5 frames of invincibility on all versions of them. A lot of his normals are great pokes, and he moves closer to you even on whiff. He just had so many positives over negatives that it didn't really make sense to play other characters, and the competitive scene took notice of that really fast. Luke started to pop up everywhere. There was an event called Midwest vs West Coast, where players from those regions did a crew battle. Luke was very helpful in that matchup as he beat a lot of players on the Midwest team. But eventually, the Midwest did come out on top. And this is what they had to say. And if, any, if everyone does not mind, can we just remind people one more time why this set was even close? Because you play Luke! You play Luke! You play Luke! You play Luke! If someone's saying you play a certain character is an insult, then I think it's safe to say that that character is hated. But yeah, I don't think Luke will be as annoying as Street Fighter 6. Thank god they redesigned him as well. But I do think a lot of people will go into it automatically hating Luke because of Street Fighter 5. And the last character on this list, Akuma. You may have thought I was going to talk about Street Fighter, but this time, I'm actually talking about Tekken. Akuma coming to Tekken 7 was probably the biggest examples of guest characters in games. Before I go into why people hate him, I just want you to watch this clip. It's party time and Chikorin's invited. <laughs> oh, here it is! Oh, here we go, here, ah, here we, we go. go! Why did you say that, Mark? I, I want to see parties, man! Oh my god, look at the health! And, and the demon, the and the bar. demon! Let's go! I can't believe what we're seeing it! Look at the life bar! Oh my goodness! Is he, a, he probably has this a sliver, right? A he might have a sliver. Combo. What? Oh my god! Oh my Adding guest characters to any fighting game is basically a balancing act. You have to make the character fit into the style of the game, while simultaneously making them feel similar to the game that they came from. This balancing act gets harder when you put a 2D character into a 3D game. Akuma got all of his Street Fighter mechanics in Tekken, which means he could do things that other Tekken characters couldn't do. You could honestly pick up Akuma and do well because he plays almost exactly the same. And even though he got nerfed many times, he's still currently one of the best characters in the game. There's a pro named Super Akuma who plays him, and he still gets a lot of hate just because he does well with Akuma. Overall, I don't really have a problem with fighting games releasing DLC characters as long as they do it right, but it can definitely present some issues. If you think about it from a business standpoint, the flashier and stronger a character is, the more inclined people will be to buy them, whether they like them or not. The reoccurring theme throughout all of this is that if the character breaks the rules and has something that nobody else has, it's going to be broken. Let me know what you think of this list. Do you think I should have mentioned any other DLC characters? If so, comment down below and tell me what your list looks like. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, follow my Twitch and Twitter for updates or future streams, and if you want exclusive content, you can head over to my Patreon. As always, I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.